Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking Craft. Just coming on today with a art journal process video. This video is actually made in November as part of Chelsea and a few others journaling prompts. So non-stop journaling in November or November daily journaling it was. So I did share this layout as a talk through, but I did film the process video of it and just got around to editing it. So I decided to do some paper painting and that's what Chelsea calls it um, when you take a whole lot of different coloured papers and make a picture out of them. Mine is a very simplified version, she does some awesome work. So basically this is a beach layout, so I've taken a whole lot of different gel prints and wipe off pages and painted papers in brown sort of sandy colours down the bottom and then I will build sort of green and blues and then blue for the sky. So I'm trying to sort of do a beach. Um, the book I'm working in, the text that you see, I'm actually um, covering it all up actually my altered novel. Um, so with the altered novel I've removed every second page and then glued four sheets together just to give the pages a bit more stability because they are quite thin. So you don't need to work in art journals, they're such expensive art journals, you can just work in recycled books which is really cool as well. So just adding the pattern papers with Mod Podge, giving them a good coat underneath and a good coat on top. I've just got some um, baking paper behind this page that I'm working on just to protect the, the glue from going down to the other page. So just bring some blue and green into there. I was tearing the papers so they have a nice soft line and I left some of the white torn edges showing in the blues and greens because I wanted to sort of make it look like waves. So quite pleased. Um, I'd like to get into some more what they call paper painting. It's beautiful some of the work that I see on the internet done that way. It's just very time consuming and sometimes I don't have oh, that whole lot of time to sit there and do it. So I believe this prompt was ocean, water, with something to do. I'm sure it was ocean. I'm sure it was ocean. Um, <laughs> I should write down what the prompts are. Um, so I've actually sped this one up a lot quicker than the rest of the video so because it took quite a while to paste the papers down I thought it might be a bit boring for you to sit there and watch me do it if it wasn't in five times. I wish my hand would work that quick. And it did take quite a while to dry as well. But I did put it aside while I was working on my focal images to get it to dry. <coughs> Excuse me. So as you can see there's a few white torn edges in there trying to sort of look like waves and all clouds in the sky. Just make sure I'm not sticking my complete book together. So I hope everyone's having a fantastic day and is enjoying watching me glue paper to paper. I think that's all we do as crafters is we sit there and glue paper to paper. But it's fun. So nearly finished. Just adding a few more final touches. Just I covered the entire page. Pasting like this also makes your book pages in your journal stronger because you're adding layers and layers of paper it does make the pages stronger as well so it does protect them a bit more if you go and work on the reverse side of them with a bit more water there's a bit more stability there as well and putting the Mod Podge all over them seals it as well and then you can work on top of it so that's done, off that goes to the side so I get out my watercolour pencils I've actually stamped out these images before I started the video. These are from a sheet of, um, adjusting the camera for this, see what I'm doing, a sheet from a free magazine I got three or four years ago. So they, they were a beach theme and they had all different beach things on them. So I'm not real good at colouring, I'll admit that now. I much prefer to art journal and paint and then colouring is not my big thing but I am getting better at it. So these are the watercolour pencils I actually got out of China about four or five years ago and they're about forty dollars for a set of seventy two so they're quite not expensive like they're not derwents or anything like that but they're quite good. They blend really nicely if you do a darker colour and lighter colour. So I'm trying to get a bit of shading and a bit of two tone colouring on the images but they are quite small as you can see. I don't let you sit here and watch the entire lot of <clears throat> colouring. I do end up, as you can see I've only got one little house there, I do end up using a whole lot more beach houses so I go off camera and 
stamped them all out and coloured them in and cut them out. Because we'd be here all day if I let you sit and watch all of those. So well, I don't have any fancy machines or dies that cut these out, so these are all fussies cut by hand when you see them all come back in, so it did take me quite a while. I've actually stamped them onto cardstock just to give them a bit more stability, because I didn't want them to sort of fade into the background. The background was quite heavy and busy, so I didn't want them to stand out. Stamping them on white cardstock, it's about 200 or 210 GSM in weight, is a bit more tricky to glue on, but it does work, and it looks really cool. And it takes the watercolour pencils very nicely, this paper. So fussing around with different colours, the lighthouses and, oh not the lighthouse, sorry, the, um, the beach houses and the woman and the starfish and the sand dollar and the uh, seahorse. Great thing about, or one thing about colouring is you don't actually have to be exact on the outside. You can see I'm not being quite exact on the outside of the image because I do know I'm going to cut that away. So I'm being more exact on the inside of the image. But because I am going to fussy cut these out, I can just cut off the excess drawing. And sometimes it's easier just to draw. Sorry, not to draw, to colour over the lines and then you can easily cut them, cut them off. So I'm trying to get a bit of shading happening and do a bit more fancy. Trying to get a bit more fancy with my art pages lately. A bit more experimental, so I decided she can match the beach house in her little Aussie costume. It's a very short swimming costume, and she's got a nice swimming hat on too. I'm wondering if this is Australia magazine, because these beach houses are quite representative of Australia. We've got some really famous little beach huts and houses on Bondi Beach down in, up in Sydney. I'm wondering if this magazine, I can't even remember the name of the magazine, but a while ago when I was building up my stamp collection, it was actually really reasonably priced to buy the magazines and get the free, free, well you paid $20 for the magazine, get the stamp set with it. So I'll finish colouring for now. So I do decide to go ahead and cut these only a few out, and then I start laying them on my page and decide, oh, I'd like a few more of those, so we will skip in a minute. And they'll be all magically cut out the magic of videos because it did take me, it probably took me about two hours to cut all the, <coughs> sorry, to cut all the little bits and pieces out. So just fussy cutting. I find if you're new to fussy cutting, or fussy cutting is basically just cutting out a shape around its edge, um, being fussy about, I suppose that's where the name comes from. I tend to turn the piece of paper as opposed to my scissors, and these are a nice little um, pair of scissors I've had for ages that have got a nice fine tip on them so you can get in quite quite close. I find cutting them, you'll see I've cut, roughly cut it out, I find doing that and getting rid of a lot of the waste paper that you're cutting off is a lot easier than having a big half sheet sort of flapping around. This particular girl was very interesting to get cut out. So she was very fine. And then she had a gap between her arms, so I just slipped, sliced up the edge of her arm and leg and um, did it. Okay, bang, we're back. Look, magically there's more colours. So I did a few more beach houses and I did a few more um, sandy things. Um, sand, things for the sand, the shells and seahorses and what have I got in there? Starfish. So just adding these with Mod Podge again. I didn't seal the water coloured pencils with anything. And I didn't activate them with water, so they were just, I could have used regular coloured pencils, but I don't have 72 colours of regular coloured pencils, so I used my watercolours. The watercolour pencil did lift slightly, but it didn't, when I made sure I was really quick and had a lot of Mod Podge on my paintbrush, and they worked out fine. Um, so I didn't see a lot of the colour lift, which was really good. So just going over them really, really well to seal them down. Because they are made out of the cardstock, they are a little bit harder to get stuck down. You've just got to push them down and add a bit more Mod Podge. You can see me stopping and holding the brush down just to hold different corners down and give it a good old coat. The entire page is now covered in Mod Podge because the back was covered and now all the images are. So giving it a good dry. I don't sit there and watch you, make you watch it all drying. 
You'll notice it's got all cloudy when the Mod Podge goes on if you've never used that product before, and then it goes clear when it dries. So we'll click to the next clear. Ah, magically it's dry. <laughs> so just taking an artist's tip pen and decide to do some shadows. I'm still still can't get this right. I see people on YouTube do it and it works magically and looks beautifully. I'm obviously doing something wrong. The pit pen stay wet for a couple of seconds on the shiny surface of the um, Mod Podge so you're able to smudge them a little which is really handy. Um, so just trying to add a bit of shadow to one side and then I do add it to a couple of sides just to give it a bit more dimension and so the images don't look like they're floating in midair. Thank you very much for watching my art journal page. I'm hoping to do a lot more process videos now that I can edit them and working out the best way to film them. Of course there'll be some that I'll just come on and do talk through, through again as well because sometimes I just can't film or I um, just don't feel like filming the video but I feel like playing and sharing it with you. Just trying to do some shadows under the houses as well there and under the girl. And the last thing to do is, I should have done this before, is to snip up all the bits of paper on the edge. And you need a sneak peek of another art journal page on the back there. So thank you for watching. I'll leave you now with me just cutting off the edges. Oh, there's some, I also use this journal to wipe off excess paint as well, so I'll have to do something with that green page one day. Um, nearly finished up this journal. I did want to finish it by the end of 2016, but we haven't got there yet. So this will continue on into 2017 as well. Probably getting about halfway through. So thank you for watching, and I'll leave you with the last few minutes of me adding a border, and I believe I add some words to it as well. I believe I get the stamps out and add some words. So I decided the border needing the border needed to be there just to give it some de de definition and um, around the edge. So it was just a nice thick line that I drew several times in a sketchy effect and then smashed it with my finger. Ah, there's the whole stamp set I show you and the ink pad using a permanent ink pad to stamp over the Mod Podge. So I just put a little title at the top of Funny Sun and then I do believe I use it without a clear block because I couldn't find it, dry it off and then I do go over it in pen just to um, make the lines a bit darker and match all the dark imagery on the page. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.